guys, what's going on? Just looking at my thoughts on Kentucky landing Olivier Saar, a transfer from Wake Forest. This news just broke this morning. He just announced this on his Twitter account where he left a big message for his Wake Forest fans because he's, he's obviously played there for the last three seasons. In his message, at the end of the message, he said, BBN, I can't wait to get started. So obviously he's excited to come to Kentucky and the edit that he put on his Twitter account looks awesome. Just wanted to say that, that he seems excited to join the Big Blue Nation. My first initial thoughts are this is an absolute huge piece of news and we've been waiting for one more addition possibly for next season's team specifically in the front court we've done some live streams on this we needed a center and a big time player in the middle and i think that's exactly what we're getting here and olivier Saar. Saar is a seven foot 255 pound center who has played three seasons in the acc for wake forest he did increase his numbers from freshman sophomore to junior but his best season from the stats and what i've seen was his junior year in last season's 2019-20 season he averaged about 13.7 points per game nine rebounds per game and also had about a little over one block per game as well. From the footage I've seen and all the stats I've been able to look at, Saar is an absolute baller. He seems like he was contributing, probably the best player on Wake Forest, if not for next season, he's going to be definitely the best player for Wake Forest going the next year. He scored 30 points against Notre Dame. He also scored 25 points against Duke in an overtime win, double overtime win. The guy was putting up a lot of points, so the guy can score, he has size, and that's exactly what we needed going the next year. That was our one area that we were kind of lacking in after losing Nick Richards, EJ Montgomery, and Nate Sassina to not being able to come back or deciding to go pro. Some other stats I wanted to touch on for Olivier Saar is that he shot 76% from the free throw line. I guess as far as negatives and what I've seen in the stats, three-point wise, he's not that much of a three-point threat. He has hit 11 three-pointers in his three years at Wake Forest, so he can obviously shoot from out there, but that's probably not the area that we're going to need him to actually take over as much next year. We really are going to need him to be in the center and be a big-time post player for us, honestly, going the next season. Another big point for Olivier Saar is that this is, this is something that I did not really know about till recently. This player efficiency rating thing. Olivier's player efficiency rating was 26.1, which will be our highest rating since Carl Anthony Towns in the 2014-15 season. Carl Anthony Towns had about 31.4 for his rating, and like I said, Olivier Sars is 26.1. To kind of put that in perspective, Nick Richards had a 25.8 player efficiency rating, while PJ Washington had a 26.0 player efficiency rating. So he's obviously a big time player. There's a lot of numbers that back that up. Not just points, but also this player efficiency rating and other things as well. Well, blocks is also another big thing that I already touched on before. So this just happened this morning. There's so much more to think about. This is just such a massive piece of news going the next season. In my opinion, an important thing to note is that while it's not 100% that he'll be eligible to play next year, the big thing going in our favor right now for Kentucky is that Wake Forest fired their coach and Danny Manning, meaning he might be able to apply and, and receive a waiver because of that firing to play immediately next season. Well, I just said that's not 100% positive because he's not a graduate transfer. He's played three years of college basketball, but he's not graduated yet. He'll be a senior next year, but as of now, it seems like he'll be able to get a waiver in order to play next season, which is just huge news because we really need a center for next season because we really don't have that yet. That's the one position that we really just did not have. We have a lot of three and fours, in my opinion. Four is probably where we have a log jam of players because going the next season, guard-wise, we're probably done. We have Davion Mintz, Terrence Clark, BJ Boston Jr., and Devin Askew. That's four right there. Big-wise, we had a couple three and fours like Dante Allen, Keon Brooks, Isaiah Jackson, Lance Ware, and Cameron Fletcher. That's five. But none of those guys was really a center, in my opinion. Lance Ware, I guess you could possibly argue to be a center. I've only seen some footage. He looks like he kind of has the build of a center, but that's not what his label is. He's, he's labeled as a power forward, which, again, I think he could probably develop into a center. We did not have that piece. Nick Richards was that piece last year. When Nick decided to go pro and EJ decided to go pro or just leave Kentucky, and then Nate couldn't come back, we really needed a big-time post player, and we are absolutely getting an Olivier Saar. There's so much more footage I, I need to see and evaluate better and just to see where he's at, but it looks like he should be eligible to play in next year as long as he receives that waiver because Wake Forest fired their coach. And that's another thing I wanted to comment really quick was their coach kind of took a shot at Kentucky just yesterday about this, making an argument to come back to get a degree there. It looks like that argument didn't really work. So yeah, nice comment there, pal. But yeah, this is just such big news going the next season. I still think we could add one more player. Right now we're at technically 10 players total. Jacob Toppin is probably not going to be eligible next year because this stupid waiver rule vote is probably not going to go in our favor this season because the NCAA just cannot get anything right. But he'll still be able to practice all season long, which is a big, big deal. Like, he can still practice with the team, travel with the team, be there. He just can't play next season. I still think we could have one more player in either, it seems like Frank Anselm, hopefully I'm saying that name right, as a possibility. We're in his top five or six teams, and we're obviously the biggest school on that list. That's one option. There's Efton Reed, who's a 2021 recruit that could possibly reclass, along with other ones that we still don't know. It's not confirmed that they're going to reclass or not. And then there's also Maker Maker, which that one, I'm not going to get too high on that one, because I remember Thon Maker, his cousin, I got excited about him coming, and he decided to go pro or just 
overseas, which I kind of see Maker doing the same thing. So overall, huge news, just massive news going the next season. Olivier Saar has committed to Kentucky. And while I will say one more time, it's not 100% that he can play next year. It's very likely because he should be able to receive that waiver because Wake Forest fired their coach. That's all I can say right now. This is our updated roster right here. Adding one more big, I think is a, is a strong possibility, but we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned. Lots more videos to come. Obviously the hype video. Now that he's got this news, I can add him in. That video will be coming out eventually. I'm waiting to see what our team's going to look like before I post it because I want to post it then to find out we have another player committing. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Big news for Kentucky. Olivier Sar is committed and that's all I can say right now. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Go Big Blue. Better the fan! The fan!